It's the third round of the Bosch Australian Rally Championship, this time on the Sunshine Coast. The Brakes Direct International Rally of Queensland is not only hosting the Bosch ARC, it's also the third round of the Asia Pacific Championship. Add in the Queensland State Championship, the all colours, classics and side-by-sides, record field of over 100 competition vehicles has descended on Queensland's holiday capital. In our program today, we'll bring you highlights of the East Coast Bull Bars SUV Challenge and the Side-by-Side -side Challenge, in addition to both two- and four-wheel drive championships. From an event characterised by a deluge of rain on recce and threatened to make it a tough weekend of rallying. It was Tom Wilde with maximum points in four-wheel drive at the end of round two. He and Lee Tierney dominated on their home turf, but this is Wilde's first foray onto Queensland roads. We don't get much rain in WA. Um, I think the last wet rally I did was four and a half years ago at the Forest Rally. So, um, But I do like the slippery stuff, so I'm looking forward to getting out there in the slippery stuff and have a bit of a skid. Michael Bowden and sister Helen Cheers trail the West Australians and bring previous experience on these roads to the competition this weekend. My game is to try and be as consistent as I can be, but I don't want to be too far behind either. So. Um, we're going to push when we can, but it's going to be a bit tricky this morning, So, but it's going to be tricky for everyone, so I don't think it's just going to matter for us. <laughs> but hold the phone. The team with the most experience in Queensland is the Sax Entry. But even local Steve Shepherd and John McCarthy have reservations. I can't say that I'm looking forward to it. Um, there's part, parts there where they have graded that I think are going to be terrible, but terrible for everyone. So all we can do is, is see what happens and hope we don't need to pull those triangles out. Last round, Perth's Nick Box made a spectacular exit from competition and looked likely to be out for the season. But support for the newcomers to the Bosch ARC sees the rebirth of the Hippo Creek Bar and Grill Evo 9 and hopefully the rebirth of Box National Campaign. It's not really the prank that's lost my confidence, it's these roads I, I, out in Recce. I've never seen roads like this before, never driven on anything like this before and that sort of made me think oh, I'll have to take it easy and sort of try and learn the roads before I really commit to them. Eli Evans clinched a second win to extend his lead in two-wheel drive. He and co-driver Glenn Weston are out to make Honda number one again, this time in the slippery Queensland conditions. You, know, you just hit him at pace with a lot of throttle and you know let the wheels spin and just let the car sort of grip and fight its way up the hills. And OK, we're not going to be as quick as the four-wheel drives up there, you know, that's a fact, but um, you know, as long as we're quick as the other two-wheel drives, then we've done the right thing. It's Jack Monkhouse and Dale Moskett who trail the Honda in their Nissan Silvia. But the gloves will come off this weekend. Obviously, two wheel drive, you need every little piece of grip we've got and not going to have much, but we've looked at the, the recce in car and, um, and taken major note of the, the really slippery play areas. We might get them in the stage and be really slow because we've been a bit too cautious, or you can easily go off. So it's, it's going to be a, a, it's a very fine line between fast stage and, and uh, keeping on the island. Mark Petter will be hoping Claire Ryan's feminine touch will bring him better luck than last round after the pair had an unscheduled excursion in Heat 1. The big news this weekend has been the anticipated return of Simon and Sue Evans in the all-new G2 spec Mazda 2. All eyes were on Evans and the car as it made a spectacular debut in testing two days before the event. Owner Mick Ryan excited about the prospect of entering the new two-wheel drive competition. Yeah, we're taking advantage of the testing. We want to make sure the car's right. We don't want to have a problem uh, on the event that, that might that might set us back and break something that's it's expensive. Or certainly, we, we we want to continue our professional image and uh, make sure that, that, that the Mazda brand is uh, well represented. Evans was taking the advantage all right, posting the quickest two-wheel drive times. But with less than 20 kilometres behind the wheel, the multiple Australian Rally champion was resolute about re-entering the championship too soon. We just haven't done enough miles in the car to, to be confident that it's going to be 100% perfect for the rally. So uh, the boys yeah, from Rally School have done a fantastic job and they put a lot of work into the car and I want to try to reward, reward them with some of the best driving I've done. So uh, to do that, I need a little bit more time in the car. So it will be another round before we see the Mazda 2 take its place in the Bosch ARC. But everyone's on notice, the former stars are back and mean business. 
There's another star in attendance this weekend. BP Ultimate's ambassador is taking part. Now, resident rally expert Ross Duncan managed to use his car to check out a new signature super special stage. Well, it's been raining six hours non-stop. I certainly hope it stops shortly because the rally starts tomorrow. Now, I've had a chance to come up here and have a look at a new stage. I didn't have a car, so the boys said, grab this one, because their driver hadn't arrived yet. Now, if you remember, last year I talked about some fantastic Shire roads out of Coffs Harbour for Rally Australia. Well, I'll tell you what, they reckon this one is just as good. It's run around the picturesque town of Pomona. It's called the BP Ultimate Special Stage. Well, the name says it all. Eight kilometres of well-maintained undulating shire roads, passing by some fantastic homes. It is the ultimate stage. Even though it's been raining, the surface is holding up fantastically well. Front-wheel drive cars will be hooking into there with the back sliding out slightly. Here's a blind crest up over the top. And here we come up to something that's a bit unusual as we slide the car through here. Tarmac. Well, how good is this? It's got trest, tricky corners, big sweepers, a little blast on tarmac. In fact, it's got the whole lot. What a perfect rally road. Oh. Well, driving that stage at rally speed will be truly exciting. Michael Clark, what does he know about rallying? That's not cricket. Dunko, you're right, mate. It's certainly not cricket. Uh, yeah, I'm no rally driver, but I've had a, I've had a wonderful time. It's as hard as I thought it was, to be honest. Um, yeah, so a lot of credit needs to go to the uh, need to go to the boys that are very successful at this. But look, I've I've had a great time. I'd love to continue to do it. Four left tightens, four left, and then it tightens three left. So hold third gear's good. Four left now. It's going to get tighter. Goes there. Stay inside the corner and keep power it on. Yep, power it up. Open and four left. 30, that's four left again. Yeah, I'll be back definitely again. And we'll be back right after the break with all the action of the Two Wheel Drive Championship. In the heart of the Mary Valley, an hour inland from Caloundra on the Sunshine Coast, is tiny Kinnelworth with a population a shade over 250. This morning, it's almost doubled in size as competition gets set to depart for the first of 11 special stages around the region. Eli Evans is the first two-wheel drive Honda on the road. Two dozen classic and APRC cars have begun to pack down the slippery surface, but not enough. Crest 100. It's a costly mistake. Six kilometres in four minutes and 53 seconds. Rallyschool.com.au junior challenge contender Luke Page is in an early model Hyundai. He's just 1.6 seconds behind him. Alan Rowe returns to the Bosch ARC this round in the Repco Nissan 200SX and is three seconds behind Page. But it's Jack Monkhouse in the Sylvia who throws caution to the wind right from the start in the slippery conditions. Monkhouse is on a mission. Nine left over Brow again, Kinks 80, 10 left over jump, flat through finish. He puts 30 seconds between himself and the only Honda that completes the first stage. Mark Pedder never shows at the stage. His Honda Jazz sidelined on the freeway en route to SS1. We've played around with a lot of things um, fuel related. Um, the boys came down and have a look, still can't work out what it is. So I think we've gone back to get the trailer and um, bring it up here and I'd say fuel tank out and see if we can find the problem. Turn three right, camber. Through SS2 derriere, despite slipping into the bush, the workmed Sylvia yep. is more than seven minutes clear of Evans Thank Honda Jazz. Short eight right over crest into seven left long. But there is good reason. I think it's a flat. It's a flat, you reckon? It's completely gone, I think. On the back? Yeah. 300, right 10. Evans and Weston press on through the 27 kilometre stage. How far we got? Yeah, it's a flat. I've got to, I'm going to have to change it, dude. All right. How far we got? Uh, we're halfway through the stage, man. We've got to. It's yep. too far. We're going to destroy the car. All right. 
things go from bad to worse. Eventually the tyre went flat, so it must have had a slow leak, and we were just, we had no choice, we had to pull over and change it. And to make things worse, when we were changing it, it fell off the, the car fell off the jack twice, because we are trying to change it on muddy conditions, so um, it was frustrating. And we, I think we lost about seven and a half minutes in the end, which uh, that hurts a lot. The well-known million stage has been modified this year and renamed Goanna. It's a technical stage over 12 k's in length with constantly changing road conditions and terrain. Evans immediately bounces back, claiming the stage by 15 seconds from Monkhouse. But it's a bounce that nearly costs him. Luckily, no puncture or bent suspension components for the G2 Jazz this time. Jack Monkhouse is 14 seconds slower, but still with a rally lead of three minutes over Alan Rowe. Guy Tyler's first Queensland rally takes a setback when second gear in the Renault Clio fails. Despite the crew's best efforts in service, the 777 Motorsport team is forced to continue on till the end of the day. The gearbox has got very tall ratios to start with, so we've been pretty much in third gear all day, but improving, having great fun, and lucky we're still here, we'll try and get it fixed overnight. Rowe and Ray Farrell are suffering drivetrain overheating. The Victorians had heard about the rough Queensland roads and fitted an aluminium gearbox guard. Ironically, this is restricting the airflow to the box, which is getting too hot. The new BP Ultimate stage, Dunco rated earlier, is to Matt Amos's liking. The high horsepower SS Commodore Ute is not the fastest rally car in the field, but it is spectacular. Through SS5, Amos and Tom Ryan claim third fastest in two wheel drive. Evans takes the 8K stage by 13 seconds from Monkhouse. Sideways in the Sylvia, I reap fastest times, but it does bring proud satisfaction. The longest serving two wheel drive pair in the ARC settled for smooth, accurate stages can only hope others around them have trouble. No such luck on the repeat stages during the afternoon. But the Honda Jazz claims victory on the gravel ahead of Jack Monkhouse for the remainder of the day. Once again, Matt Amos rises to the occasion through the spectator point of Derriere, trailing Evans and Monkhouse, but third for his efforts. By the second time through Goanna, the innate motorsport Fiesta lifts in stage. Adrian Coppen and Tim Batten are still in the fight for the rallyschool.com.au junior challenge, but cross-entering the main competition rewards them with third across the nearly 13 kilometres. The Repco 200 SX continues to slide down the leaderboard. Rowe looking forward to service. We've got a little bit of a gearbox issue. We need to um, probably change the gearbox tonight. She's not really working very well. The lead two-wheel drives, on the other hand, are working well. Evans holding out Monkhouse by just three seconds at the end of the stage to move up three places overall. The rally lead, though, is not his. You know, the wind's out of our hand now. All we can do is just do our best and, um, and see where we end up. So it's really up to the other blokes on where they finish. Cars are flying at the night stage back in Caloundra. The airport hastily converted from a runway to a 1.9 kilometre super special stage. Another new component of the Brakes Direct Rally of Queensland. Eli Evans throws the Honda Jazz around the tarmac stage in front of the crowd. But it's Monkhouse who steals the show. With it, the final two stage wins and heat one. inside, don't cut. Eli Evans has moved back into second just 45 seconds ahead of Alan Rowe with Luke Page and Adrian Coppen rounding out the quickest five in the Bosch ARC two-wheel drive. Next up, the action in the four-wheel drive Bosch Australian Rally Championship from the Brakes Direct Rally of Queensland. Thoughts Michael Bowden had of taking it easy in the opening stages of the Bosch ARC from Queensland went out the door from the start. Sister Helen Cheers guiding the Warhope Warrior to a win by five seconds over Tom Wilde. Without any previous experience here in Queensland, Wilde accounts for himself well on the greasy surface. 
Tony Sullen's return to the Bosch ARC this season was slower than he would have liked, but a good performance in Perth showed some of his old form. He and Julia Barkley waste no time this round, just 0.3 of a second behind Tom Wilde in the latest spec Evo 10. Charlie Drake is right there too, just a further second back. It did okay. The surprise is Steve Shepard in the Saks okay, Evo 10. Yeah, 12 one, seconds two. off the pace of the lead four-wheel drive. Four left, easy to see. Nick Box makes a cautious start to his re-entry to the championship after his big crash and makes no excuses for his seventh position. Well, we plan to take an easy approach, but we've gone a bit overboard there. And um, I can't get a rhythm. I can't get a feel for the surface. There's so much constant surface change that um, we're just not used to, I suppose. I mean, it all comes down to experience. These boys have been here before and, and we haven't, and it's showing. On the other hand, Brett Middleton is delighted with his start. The East Coast Bull Bars Forester mixing it with all the four-wheel drives midfield in eight. The development of the turbo diesel taking another step forward this round with a modified exhaust system. The car's going good. The new exhaust giving a little bit more grunt and at least people now know we're coming, so um, it's all good fun. It's not good fun for Anthony Grace. Got a bit of a problem with reverse gear at the moment and um, when we're on a bit of a slant and we try and back up it just pops out. We're both holding onto the gear stick and we're in reverse and it's going pop, 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 pop. The slippery conditions make tyre choice difficult. There's a few competitors and Michael's one of them who are considering hards or using hards. Um, more to see if they can bite through the slime and the, the slippery surface to get to the harder clay underneath. Out in front, Bowden's confidence with the surface grows, but he's also resolved an engine issue between rounds. Fixing a small leak discovered in the turbocharger now means he has more power at his disposal, and it's showing. A 25-second lead over Wild through SS2 Derriere. A spin costing the West Australian vital seconds. Caution left three, tights the left six, rough into right six. Tony Sullins is again third, just four seconds behind Wilde. But Shepard has picked up the pace and takes fourth, less than a second behind Sullins. The youngest competitor in the Bosch ARC, Daniel Day, begins tentatively, having already qualified for the rallyschool.com.au junior challenge. His focus is now on gaining valuable experience on the new road surfaces, and that includes causeways. Day and co-driver Steve Glenny are in for early service. So we've hit the dip and the turbo's moved around. The exhaust has just gone and shot flames to the oil lines, and the oil lines have gone. And it's slaked oil everywhere, so we made it through luckily to here, so we should be able to fix it. Sullins is not the only early model Subaru in the field this weekend. Queensland's Marty Beckton returns to try his hand at the national level of competition. He's third through Goanna this time, though. Shepard is second, a favourite stage of co-driver John McCarthy. And short seven right, exit brow 50. Michael Bowden still has control of the four-wheel drive reins. The Hollinger Engineering Evo 9 clearly favourite in four-wheel drive. Charlie Drake strikes out in Goanna. After his good start through SS1, he punctures on a rock before the yump. Game over when the car slides off the road, where it must remain until after competition finishes. Brett Middleton hits the same rock, but stays on the road. I'm pleased to say it's not the Kumo tyre, it's the driver or the nut behind the wheel, so... Um, I'm supposed to learn by my mistakes, but I reckon I'm consistent because I got a flat tyre in the wrecky car during reconnaissance on exactly the same rock. Well, Andrew reckons if I do it on the second pass through that stage, he'll make me change the tyre on my own. Nick Box finds form through Mitchell Creek. The 10k stage that is SS4 sees the West Australian finish behind Shepherd and Bowden. The Subarus of Beckton and Sullins are next as teams prepare for the new BP Ultimate Special Stage. Today, it's just a new stage. Tomorrow, extra points are on offer for the three fastest cars in two- and four-wheel drive across the eight-kilometre Shire Road. Even a change in tyre compounds doesn't slow Bowden. He grabs the stage win from Nick Box 
by just one second. Bowden dominates through the repeat afternoon stages. With no rain and more than 100 cars over the roads, they are drying, making for faster times. Both he and Tom Wilde are 15 seconds quicker than their first pass, but still separated by five seconds. But for a more consistent result, Tom Wilde might have been second outright. That accolade rests with Steve Shepard, who has steadily improved since his slow start this morning. Again, through SS7, he increases his outright position over Wilde. Through Goanna, the new kid from WA hits back, smashing 14 seconds out of Shepard's time. And with it, second place outright by just 0.3 of a second. Brett Middleton is also having a ride on the wild side. The lesser-powered turbo diesel stretching the boundaries of the Forester in the East Coast Bull Bars SUV Challenge. The sax entry returns fire through Mitchell. Shepard taking the stage from Wild by less than three. Both Evo 10s in front of Michael Bowden for the first time today. With it, Chep moves back into second as the competition heads to Caloundra to settle the score. Oi, what you meant to left there? It's certainly a dark time for the Pedder's suspension entry on the runway. Tom Wilde missing a critical turn on the bitumen and losing a staggering 30 seconds to end leg one. Bowden is fast, but Nick Box is faster. May have left his run a bit late, but the Hippo Creek Evo 9 is beginning to serve up results. In outright four-wheel drive turns, Michael Bowden collects the half-heat points for today, with Steve Shepard second after a disappointing end to Tom Wilde's day. Tony Sullins is in touch, but Nick Box will need to find another gear if he's to make an impression on the second heat of the Brakes Direct Rally of Queensland. Before heat two, we check out the side-by-side -side challenge and the classics after the break. With the emphasis this year on the new two-wheel drive championship, cars more popular amongst manufacturers, comes a shift in driving technique. While the traditional rear-wheel drives look exciting sliding through a corner, they aren't always the fastest. Somebody forgot to tell Jack that. Most modern cars are front-wheel drive, and the difference behind the wheel is huge. Not only is the weight of the engine over the driving wheels providing better traction, but the car is being pulled around the corners rather than being pushed. On roads like these here in Queensland, that can translate into better times for front-wheel drive, if they do it right. Some of the greats of rallying developed the left foot braking technique way back in the late 60s, firing their Mini Coopers onto the world stage and demonstrating just how quick and nimble a front-wheel drive car can be. To master it, you must go into a corner with power to spare. You have to be on that throttle all the way through the corner and out through the exit. If you happen to back off, the car will start to step out at the rear and if you're lucky enough not to spin, you will have washed all that entry speed off and with it, any chance of a good time. Sure, the four-wheel drives took over with superior traction, but we lost much of the skill and flair that comes with good two-wheel drive control. Now the resurgence of modern front-wheel drive cars is beginning to showcase some of those driving skills once again. While the Classics aren't competing in the main championship, they are providing much of the spectacle that Dunko talks about with two-wheel drives. The predominantly rear-wheel drive field spends plenty of time going sideways. Regular, Jeff David fronted this round with a brand new 350 horsepower Porsche 911 RSR. Oh, it's like the car that Henry Toivonen drove in uh, the mid 80s in the European Championship. Wide body, uh, a bit more power, so it'll be interesting out there today. Niggling fuel issues delayed the debut of this special replica RSR, leaving Neil Bates to set the pace as expected. Our own Ross Dunkerton blasted off from the start, setting second fastest time on the first stage, even with the handbrake latch jammed on for the first 200 metres. He was forced out when the engine let go, leaving him to concentrate on his television duties. 
Richard Anderson took over second place behind Bates in the Alfa Romeo Alfetta GT. But his luck ran out when the head gasket blew. Keith Thackrell's immaculate BDG escort made it successfully through the first day, despite his best efforts. But the gearbox left the Queenslander sideline for the remainder of the weekend. The diverse field of classics included Clay Batnock's 1970 Toyota Corolla. He took over second spot from Richard Anderson when he dropped out. But like everyone holding that position, he eventually fell by the wayside. The alternator in Chris Harbeck's Salika kept him out of the placings on Saturday, but a better run in League Two saw him finish third for the day. It didn't take long for the high horsepower Porsche to catch up once the electrical gremlins were sorted. The consistency of Kathy Donoghue in the BMW starting and finishing every stage meant Jeff David could only manage the final podium spot come the end of the weekend. He and Neil Bates have lifted the bar on the burgeoning category with more and more classics coming out of the woodwork. It was a far cry from his V8 supercar, but Tim Slade traded his Stone Brothers Racing Falcon for a Polaris Razor 900 for the weekend to try out this new form of racing. As expected, he grabbed the limelight early, but for all the wrong reasons, when the nimble side-by-side -side swapped ends. Awesome fun, I'm, I'm having a ball. Um, yeah, obviously it was unfortunate this morning to do it so early and having to drive all those, you know, awesome stages with the car the way it was. But um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's great fun and um, get it back to how it should be, do the couple of stages this afternoon and, and start again tomorrow. His teammate Cody Crocker set a cracking pace and won through for Polaris in heat one. While Michael Guest slotted the Can-Am Commander 1000 into second after some consistent driving at the front of the field. Interestingly, these machines generally are found on farms and aren't registered for road use. Special regulations have allowed them to be driven in a limited manner in some states, but in Queensland, they must be transported to and from closed special stages by trailer. Here we've got to travel about 10 kilometres out the start of the stage, so up on the trailer, out as soon as we get on the gravel, then we're allowed to drive on those roads. So it's just a safety thing. Uh, they don't comply to the ADR rules like you'd have you know, with normal cars. They've got airbags and all that great safety equipment. We've got blinkers and good brakes and all those other things. So just on the trailer, out to the start of the stage, end of the long transports back in. It's, it's actually working very well. I, I didn't know how it'd go, but it's, it's working pretty well. Crocker's dominance in leg two came unstuck with double flat tyres in SS14 derriere reverse. But Tim Slade made up for his indiscretion in leg one, bringing the Razor home regularly in the top three each stage. James Ship ended his weekend with an off-road excursion. He and Dad Warren were fine, but their run of points came to an early end. Snake Racing's regular two machines in the hands of Nathan Shivers and Wayne Murphy jostled for position, with Murphy getting the upper hand after Shivers dropped out of contention late in both legs. Ian Hughes didn't make things easy for the V8 supercar driver who was finding form fast in the unfamiliar race machine. Hughes and Adam Barnes kept the Razor rookie honest at the front of the field. A big push from Michael Guest and David Green saw the Can-Am commander mixing it with Slade and Hughes. We're pushing so, so hard and uh, yeah, taking a few little risks here and there, but that's what you've got to do if you want to try and, uh, try and uh, you know, get the result that you really want. The lead seesawed through the final stages with Tim Slade leading outright in the penultimate stage. A do-or-die effort from Michael Guest saw him join Slade to share the prize for the leg win. But with Guest's third in leg one, he claimed the weekend trophy for Can-Am. The gaps closed between Polaris and Can-Am in the Australian side-by-side -side challenge. Michael Guest leaping up the leaderboard to challenge the Polaris supremacy with a good win this weekend. Coming up next, the final four-wheel drive heat of the Bosch Australian Rally Championship from the Sunshine Coast of Queensland. The sun broke early on the Sunshine Coast at Caloundra, but the crews in the Bosch ARC were already departing the RSL, bound for Imble. Tom Wilde's chances of a win this weekend took a setback last night 
when he went the wrong way. A big mistake and a stupid mistake to make, but everyone's done it once and we will put it behind me and have a big day today. But I, I like to have a challenge, so it's dropped us back 30 seconds on Shep to try and go for second. And 17, right two plus clip finish. And a setback is exacerbated in the first stage, Kandanga, when his intercom fails. Fortunately, voice projection is not one of co-driver Lee Tierney's weaknesses. I can, I can hear you when you're yelling without it on. Oh, really? Yeah. Two, three right here. The West Australians finished just one second behind Steve Shepard, but like leg one, both are trailing Michael Bowden. The goal has to be to try pull him in, put pressure, as much pressure on him as we can and see where we end up. Michael Bowden loses to Tom Wilde through breakneck by just 0.1 of a second. Shepard is three behind, but Tony Sullins is only 0.1 behind the sacks entry. Five seconds cover the fastest five. Nick Box right on their tail. Through derriere reverse, Bowden is back in front. Sullins continues to apply the pressure. Third home in SS14. Steve Shepard is left languishing with a broken diff through the spectator point. Worse still, there are three more stages before service. Making that will be difficult. Making the podium now highly unlikely. Turn two left, uphill. The Hippo Creek Evo 9 starts the short Andrew Dodkins reverse stage, but only just. About 5Ks into the 27K stage, it broke the mount for one of the rear arms on the rear wheel. So we had our rear wheels point in different directions. We sort of drove through as quick as we can and then got a strap and strapped it in and then ran the next stage about 6Ks long, I think, as quick as we could. And then when we got to the end, we stuffed around with a bit of chain trying to fix it, but ran out of late time. And the tyres have worn out from pointing in different directions, so we were out of tyres too. In just his 10th event since his baptism in rallying at the WRC two years ago, Mick Patton moves into fourth for SS15. In a weekend of ups and downs for most, Patton is steering the Repco Subaru consistently across the Queensland gravel. Brett Middleton might have a wealth of experience in rallying, but his time behind the wheel of the Subaru Forester is limited. The characteristics of the turbo diesel mean Middleton and co-driver Andrew Benefield are usually running midfield, but through SS15, the reverse of Andrew Dodkins, the pair is fifth outright. The BP Ultimate stage today is a power stage, meaning championship bonus points of five, three and one for the fastest three cars in two-wheel drive and four-wheel drive. Once again, Michael Bowden shows the field a clean pair of heels, grabbing the stage by five and five more championship points. Tony Sullins is next quickest. A change to 900 Kumos for the first time pays off. Lap brow 70, caution right four minus, camber on exit. Tom Wilde right, is too eager. The spin costing him valuable time and bonus points. He keeps pushing though, trying to rein in Bowden. Through Kandanga 2, Wilde stays with Shepard, who has now replaced the rear diff, but Bowden has cleared out by another seven seconds. Making matters worse, Tony Sullins is just 0.3 behind Wilde, the older model Subaru being driven to its limit. Steve Shepard strikes in the repeat of breakneck, but misses the mark by just 0.6 of a second. Even the 34 kilometre final stage is not enough for Tom Wilde to close the gap on Bowden. But Shepard is less than 20 seconds shy of a podium finish. Tony Sullins has been driving well, but he's been nursing a damaged gearbox mount bolt that's threatened to break all day. He pushes on, eager to secure third outright, but it eventually breaks, and he's forced to slow and accept fourth. Further up the road, Steve Shepard is still hammering along, unaware he can now ease up. 150. Good job, mate. Oh, are you? Just shit yourself, we've got no gears. No, no. With no drive, the sax entry is sidelined. The pendulum know, swings really back in favour of Sullins. All he and Julia Barkley have to do is finish, and third place is theirs. The gearbox fell out of the car about a third of the way into it, and then we passed Steve back at the creek crossing. He's gone too hard, just done something, hit the bank or something. Oh, really? 
So um, he's, he's not finished and we've held third. Tom Wilde has no answer to Michael Bowden. The Hollinger Engineering Evo 9, driven by the brother and sister combo from Warhol, finished the stage 42 seconds in front of Wilde. A massive four minutes clear for the weekend. Our East Coast Bull Bars challenge driver, Brett Middleton, finishes in fifth, proving reliability is a major factor in the Brakes Direct Rally of Queensland. Michael Bowden jumps to the top of the championship leaderboard by three points ahead of Tom Wilde. Mick Patton's stellar weekend rewards him with third in the championship and the restricted Premier League lead. Steve Shepherd slips behind Simon Knowles, whose performance today in the APRC elevates him into fourth in the championship, ahead of a less than satisfactory home round for Steve Shepherd. How Simon and Margot Knowles appear in the results without being in the rally is not quite the mystery you might think. They were entered in the Asia Pacific Rally Championship, running in front of the Bosch ARC. While not physically in the ARC event, their times flow through to the national round to encourage Australian drivers to take part in international events. The Knowles weekend didn't start well. A flat as they started the first 12-kilometre Goanna stage yesterday meant they were behind the eight ball. But that was their last real issue with the OTEC lubricants Mitsubishi. The Group N spec car required for international events performed faultlessly. A clean run for the husband and wife team in their 11th rally of Queensland. A well-deserved third in ARC and for the first time dipping their toes in the international waters. All part of their goal to enter the full Asia Pacific Championship in 2013. Up next, the action from the final heat of the Bosch two-wheel drive ARC from the Sunshine Coast of Australia. It's a full head of steam in the Bosch two-wheel drive rally championship. Alan Rowe is back in the game with a new gearbox in the Repco 200SX after his crew worked overtime in the morning service while Mark Petter is just pleased to be back full stop. It's nice to be here. So a bit of a, yeah, a nerve-wracking transport up just to make sure we got here, but we're here, sun's out, so we'll uh, go have some fun. The master of fun, Jack Monkhouse, in the work med Nissan Silvia, is trying to focus on leading his first national rally. As an endurance rally, both days count for the win. You have to push on, like yesterday we knew we had a, a big buffer and we still had to press on. Um, like anything can happen in rallying, as I said, uh, we got two flats in Perth and that cost us how long, you just never know. And, and those last few stages yesterday, every corner felt like I had a flat tyre. It's like, oh no, don't go flat. You've you got to get it out of your head and just focus on your notes. Because if the second you think of something, a flat or, or what's going on around me, you're not focusing on, on the corners coming up. But the focus this morning for Monkhouse and Moskett is the car. 30. It's got no rear drop. It's broken the shaft or something, mate. Broken the shaft. Uh, broken rear knuckle in half. Yeah, right rear. Broken clean half, drive shafts come out, no going any further. As he said himself, anything can happen in rallying. Eli Evans dominates from the start, clearly the quickest of the two Honda Jazzers and leading the field through Kandanga. Pedder is 50 seconds behind him, but happy to finally be out on the Shire Roads. Luke Page is third through SS13, breakneck. The older model high spares Hyundai is severely underpowered compared to its competition. Page is one of four young drivers here this weekend, representing the rallyschool.com.au junior challenge, and Mick Ryan has reason to be proud. Good, we've got four juniors up here running in two wheel drive cars, uh, one from each state. We've got a Queenslander, a Victorian, uh, one from the ACT, and, and a young guy Tyler's come over from South Australia, and it's been good to see him race, a bit of an interstate challenge. Leading the charge in two-wheel drive juniors is Steve McKenzie, who won eight of the nine stages yesterday and has won a piece with Luke Page this morning. Yeah, young Steve works for us in Victoria and we're really proud actually of the fact that he's been with us for a couple of years and we've helped to try and develop him and keep him fast and safe and, and give him some techniques. He's a great young fella. McKenzie sneaks into third on the timesheet for two-wheel drive through Derriere Reverse, ahead of Alan Rowe, who has a moment mid-stage. Adrian Coppen beats Rowe back into fourth in stage through the reverse run of Andrew Dodkins. 
the Innate Motorsport Fiesta providing yet more variety in two-wheel drive. Straight over crest, fast right six. Evans capitalises on the chance to bag eight. extra championship points through the BP Ultimate Power Stage in a time of four minutes and 15 seconds. Mark Pedder collects the extra two points through the power stage with Alan Rowe grabbing the final point on offer. Pedder's good work is undone next stage, SS17, the repeat of Kandanga. Five right. Repeating. Sorry. In fact, Alan Rowe gets the nose of the 200SX in front at the finish line. Leaving the best till last, special stage 19, Big Derriere, becomes the focus for action to wrap up the round. Mark Pedder and Claire Ryan push the Honda Jazz, but maybe too hard with a suspected flat tyre. It's actually a broken sway bar that's punctured the tyre and caused the flat. Pedder's already average weekend just became more average. The second Honda did make the finish, but the accolades were with Evans Honda, Eli covering the 34 kilometre stage in the second fastest of all ARC cars, including four wheel drives. What a ride. Honda, Honda Jazz has done it again, so, mate, I'm, I'm pumped. It hasn't missed a beat all season so far, so, touch wood. It's been a good year so far, and um, I'm hoping to get the win for Honda. And when he does, but a great comeback for Alan Rowe, who finishes the final stage and leg in second place. With Jack Monkhouse sidelined today, Eli Evans now puts a firm grasp around the two-wheel drive championship. Alan Rowe's performance this round brings him up into third, ahead of Adrian Coppin and Mark Pedder. South Australia is the next stop on the Bosch ARC calendar. And let's not forget, that's Jack's backyard. It's sure to be a fantastic fight for two-wheel drive championship points. We'll catch you there. Bye for now.